All right, let's let's uh, let's get started. Thank you for attending uh, today's uh, webinar session. Um, in order to get, I guess, the best out of this, uh, this session, um, are, is there anything that, uh, that you need to ask questions on? There is a little bar in the GoToWebinar section on the right-hand side. Type in your questions over there. I'll be able to see it. If there's a question um, that pertains to that slide, then we'll see if we can answer it there and then. Otherwise, uh, we'll wait until the end and we'll answer the questions there. So feel free to enter uh, any questions over there. Also, uh, if you want to follow us on Twitter, um, at BizMaturity, um, I give you my Twitter handle at the end of the day if you want to follow uh, follow me. Um, we do uh, tag our, our tweets out there with uh, hash QData underscore EM and or TNT for track and trace. Uh, those are the, the, the specific ones that are, are relevant to the today's set, uh, webinar. On our Facebook page, uh, we do have a, an actual page on event management too, so we make sure that we all the information that we've collected throughout uh, all of our implementations, uh, we throw it up there. So if SAP is uh, releasing new OSS notes like they've been doing the last uh, couple of weeks uh, through because of some of the projects, we've been, we've been working on them uh, with them. So we work closely with SAP and they've been releasing notes. Well, those notes are published out on that uh, Facebook web page. Um, so specifically, you know, around the overview monitor, there's a lot of changes over there too to improve the performance. Um, our LinkedIn page, there's our company page too. Again, uh, we got some information out there and we run a couple of groups uh, and specifically on event management too. So that's a good place to go for forums and stuff like that to ask questions and so forth. Uh, our blog also has some content on, on event management too and we write our articles also out there. Um, we'll link to them from Facebook and LinkedIn so you don't have to you know, search and for them, but our main blogs on event management all at our blog at qdata.wordpress.com. Um, today we're going to do the third of four uh, in our EM webinar series. So every Thursday in the month of October we've been doing a, a webinar at this time. Um, be sure to join us again next week. Uh, we're going to look at uh, event management and the other components of SAP's track and trace solution. Uh, just to give it away, Auto ID infrastructure, Object Event Repository, and GBT make up the, the other three products in that suite. If you're interested and, uh, and enjoy this webinar, or just want to hear my voice again because of the cool accent, uh, just go to our website, qdatausa.com, click on resources, and then uh, previously recorded webinars, and you should see that uh, probably by, by tomorrow. Also, if you missed our previous uh, webinars on, on event management, uh, you'll find them there too. We've also got others on uh, GBT and track and trace serialization and, and so forth. So, um, you know, be sure to go check them out. All right, so we've got a lot of content to cover today, so I'm going to go pretty quick. If, again, uh, if you have any questions, uh, stop me. We'll see if we can get it done in time. But uh, today we're going to go over a quick overview of what event management is for those of the folks on the, on the line that uh, don't know about it. And then we're going to go run through uh, a couple of the uh, cool scenarios that are delivered with event management out of the box. And then I'm going to take you through four implementations uh, in the different spaces where the, the clients have used uh, event management uh, to manage their processes. Um, and then we're going to wrap up with uh, what it is we've covered today. So let's move along. Uh, Nicely. What is event management? It's SAP's implementation of uh, supply chain event management, which is a concept coming out of uh, the supply chain uh, industry back in the 1990s. They needed visibility into the execution piece of the supply chain as the supply chain expanded across geographies and, and certainly enterprise enterprises. Uh, they needed to get that visibility of what was actually happening outside of their, their four walls and uh, they came up with a concept of supply chain event management and SAP was part of that sort of consortium that came together with those uh, standards and, uh, and out, was, out was born SAP event management. So you may even see in, you know, technically in the back end some of the components are actually called SCEM although the product itself is SAP event management. All right, it's a standard tool to, to uh, track and trace or monitor the status of your business processes. Okay, so any business processes, 
you know, it started out in the supply chain space and it's moved into basically anything in, uh, in, in SAP right now. Uh, if it's a business process out there, then uh, it's particularly a hook into event management in order to, you know, extract the information. So extract the plan, extract the events from that event, uh, from in, into event management and allow you the ability to, to track it. It allows you to measure compliance against the plan, right? So if you're extracting the plan and then you bounce the actual execution against them. So if I have a, a delivery that needs to be created by a certain time and then the delivery was created at another time, I can bounce uh, the two together and just determine whether I have an exception or not. Or if I need to pay uh, an invoice by a certain time and then that time comes and goes without payment, again, I can react to that and see if I need to, you know, let the accounts payable folks know that I need to, you know, cut the check. The last thing over there that's uh, key, we need to give visibility of our processes to all, um, and assets, to all the people out there that are interested in this particular business process. What SAP does really well in the normal business uh, suite is provide visibility to the folks that are involved in that process, right? So if I'm a, you know, a procurement person, I have good uh, transactions in order to see what's happening with my particular purchase orders um, and even goods receipts and invoice receipts against those POs. I've got all access to that, but uh, you go one level higher or one level sideways uh, to the accounts payable folks or up to my management or the executives out there or maybe the sales folks, they don't have access to those transactions. You know, often it's separation of duty, you're not allowed to get access to those transactions because they also allow you to change things then it's a case of no, no, no. So giving visibility to those other folks and also outside your four walls, visibility to you know the, the, your suppliers out there to see what's the, the progress of their POs and, and so forth um, is, is invaluable. The business drivers behind event management, uh, first of all, risk mitigation. You know, uh, more and more um, industries are implying um, or imposing regulations out there. So for example, on the serialization and authentication in the pharmaceutical uh, industry. Regulations are on the way in the U.S. to, to ensure that, uh, well, to help reduce the, the, the possibilities of counterfeit product getting into the supply chain. Um, and event management is one of the main drivers that will allow us to actually um, provide that authentication scenario. Real-time exception and notifications. So again, you know, so we buy if we want to reduce our risk, then we need to get to the, the fact that we've reached an, uh, an exception point in our process as quickly as possible. You know, I like to call that uh, time to insight. You know, so if we can reduce the time to, to insight into the fact that we now have an issue, then we, uh, we can react much quicker and we can reduce the impact of that, uh, that issue. Lack of process visibility, you know, I mentioned before, uh, folks out there are just not able to see the status of what their, their orders are. You know, just take a normal sales order. If you go into the sales order, quite a few flicks, you can get to, you know, somewhat of a status uh, piece. You know, you can see, you know, has it been shipped, uh, partially shipped, you know, possibly invoiced. Uh, you can have a look at document flow to potentially have a look at those. But you can't see, for example, the fact that, you know, it hasn't shipped, should it have shipped by now. Uh, you need to go and dive into the, all right, let's go look at the schedule line. The PGI should have happened. Okay, it hasn't happened. Uh, you know, the information's in SAP, but it's very hard to get to. And then, and it's again, you, you know, the salesperson knows how to navigate that document, but not necessarily the, the warehouse person. Okay. Um, increased customer satisfaction. Again, you can provide that status visibility to your customer. Uh, you don't need to provide them the full detail, just the detail that they're interested in, right? So that's that's pretty cool. Uh, the desire for continuous improvements. Okay, so once we've, uh, you know, established our plan, put it out there, and then we put our events against that, uh, that plan, measure them, uncover their exceptions. Once the process is finished, we pass all that information into a BW type world so that we can roll them up into KPIs, key performance indicators, so that we can run our analytics against them. So we can start to answer questions like, how well did we perform? Where are the issues that we need to go and address? Um, we've got some examples in, in some of the, the use case studies coming up 
where I'll run through you know how that made a big impact on some of our clients. Okay, last slide over here on the event management, then we'll move into some of the detail. Um, each relevant business process is represented in the EM by an event handler. Um, with that event handler, we store attributes against them. So these are just attributes that describe that event handler. So an event handler could be, for example, a sales order line item. An attribute would include, for example, the material number, the quantity, the date created, the customer, uh, you know, all the information that we need to describe that particular uh, line item. Uh, tracking IDs come along with that. Tracking IDs are values, again, that are attributed to that line item that we post events against. So, for example, again, in sales order line item, the tracking ID would be a sales order number. It could also be the sales order plus the line item number if we need an event to be posted at the line item level. Parameters are those attributes that are discussed. Plan milestones and measurements. What This is the plan. Um, so a uh, milestone is just something that needs to occur down the road. So again, if I look at my order to cash scenario, an order gets created. At a certain time, it should be uh, you know, ready to be fulfilled. And then it should be, uh, a delivery should be created. That delivery should be post goods issued. Uh, an invoice should be created and so forth. The counting document generated. Those are, uh, are milestones out there that need to occur. Uh, linked to those milestones, not just dates and times as to when these things should occur, but also, you know, if if it makes sense, a location. Okay, so we need the delivery to be uh, created uh, for this particular plant, which relates back to a location. Uh, it also could be a, a partner. All right. So if we expect, for example, a um, a FedEx truck to pick up our, our our shipment, and we start to get messages back from from UPS, that would be a problem, right? So, because our plan was for FedEx to pick it up. Measurements relate more around, um, we can again uh, fix, for example, temperature and weight to a particular event or a plan that needs to happen. So we need to say, for example, in the cold storage scenario, if we're moving product throughout the, the life cycle, it, the, the product needs to remain at 32 degrees or less. Um, and at each point in the, t in, in, the, in the process, we need our process control our sensor to base, basically send me a, a temperature reading together with the event. And if it comes in at 33, for example, then we know that there's an exception over there and we can react to it and pull it off the truck or out off the shelf. Um, we have actual events that are posted against the, those event ha handlers. So we talk about uh, the plan, which gets uh, listed against um, the event handler, and then the, we actually get the events. Those events are the ones that pass in my measurements, so pass in my temperature, pass in the weight. They can also pass in attachments, so if we do a proof of delivery at a customer, we can send the, the signature in with that. If we get an event that tells me that I've delayed my process or something to that effect, uh, then we can change the plan with that event. Okay. And ultimately, it's the, the, the actual against it, and that's the one that uncovers the, the exception. Okay. A comment here on EM, I, we, I forget those questions, you know, why it's just, uh, if it's a, a business process piece, why is it not business process monitoring, why is it not workflow, you can use those tools to do it, well, no, it's, uh, it has a completely different uh, reason for being there and a completely different focus. So first of all, um, BPM, uh, Business Process Management, is more aligned with uh, CCBPM, which is sort of the workflow and the PI space, or SAP's Business Workflow. That's, that's the game that, that it's playing with. So just off the bat, SAP Business Workflow you would typically use if you're trying to automate a business process within an SAP system. So if you have a business system, con a, a, bus a business process contained within an ECC environment, then you know, the SAP's business workflow is one of the best tools to use for that. If you're trying to uh, automate a business process that spans several SAP systems in your landscape, for example, CRM, SRM, ECC, you know, then probably CCBPM is, uh, you know, more aligned for that. And BPM is, uh, is more aligned towards the automation across several disparate systems. So you'll have uh, Oracle and SAP and, you know, anything else, Siebel, 
and you bring them together, then you would probably use a VPN system where you can just call the web services to integrate. Um, SAP EM is the tool that monitors those business processes. We have tight integration to extract the events uh, from, the SA, from the SAP systems. So it's one of the key benefits for using this. It, it gives you that content to actually be able to extract the information out of SAP. For all, most of the SAP uh, systems, like CRM, it's not there, but the rest of them, you know, it's there. Uh, on the other side of it, we have tight integration with VW for the analytics piece. So again, it's easy to extract just through configuration the information needed needed in VW in order to do our KPIs. Um, then we also provide the, the web services to be able to post events and query the data out of the uh, event management system. So again, you can see it's a, it's a tool that sits there and monitors business processes. Webflow is more there to drive business processes. In fact, EM has a very tight integration with SAP's business workflow, um, which means event management is the one that will maybe uh, uncover the exception, and then we would trigger a workflow to uh, action someone to go and fix the issue out there. And because we've defined a process, when this particular exception happens, we need to follow this procedure, and this is the group of people that needs to do it. All event management can trigger that for you. Okay, so they work hand-in-hand uh, hand and complementary. So let's look at what's uh, come standard with SAP. Uh, the standard processes delivered uh, the, uh, that are in event management are called visibility processes. And that covers basically uh, documentation and the configuration and uh, the development around enabling these scenarios in, in event management. There's content that comes on the application system which would be ECC as an example. So that's the extraction of the plan and the extraction of the events. Uh, we also get content for BI and PI for the scenario. If it doesn't exist, then you've just taken a similar visibility uh, or visibility process, um, copy that content and, and you can rework it. So there are a couple of scenarios that don't come with BI or, or um, PI content, but you can just leverage it from uh, one of the other scenarios. Okay. All of the scenarios come with documentation, so a scenario description and a configuration guide because there are some pieces that you can't, uh, SAP can't deliver out the box and you need to go ahead and configure those pieces in order to get the, the scenario working for you. Okay. Um, high level, uh, we have on the ECC side, we have procurement, fulfillment, production order piece. Um, outbound delivery, inbound delivery, transportation, seasonal procurement, rail car management, all of that's available in ECC. Rail car is a custom development piece, you need to license that separately. On the auto ID infrastructure, we've got you know, auto ID enabled, outbound, inbound delivery, uh, returnable transport items, uh, PTA scenario, which is your object event repository piece. We've got responsive replenishment and purchase order visibility in the SNC landscape, and we've got freight orders, freight units um, in the transportation management. In fact, there's some uh, some good movement in the transportation management space in the EN9 version and the TM9 version. Uh, new scenarios, you know, allow you to track your resources and so forth. So uh, definitely big things happening over there. That's where the main movement is in EM. Uh, right now with regards to the TM integration. So on the TM side, I um, just want to just call this one out. Where EM plays a, a role is in the process of freight execution and monitoring. So if you're looking at any TM you know, presentations, if you're looking at where's my truck and you're planning your truck and you're looking at a map of, okay, this is where things are happening and stuff like that, uh, and any statuses of the, and the execution piece of your of your transportation planning, then uh, that is all coming out of the event management. So your execution tab on your TM, uh, on your TM order, your freight order, your freight unit is actually coming out of uh, event management. So on the EM side, if we look on the right there, it's tracking freight units and orders and bookings. Uh, all the events between from loading all the way through to POD are captured in the systems. And we have predefined roles of shipper, carrier, consignee, 
um, that are delivered so that you can get your web uh, user interface going. So those are views that are delivered for you. Um, there is some alert integration. So the alerts are, you know, the ability if we uncover an exception, let's send you an alert using the alert framework. Um, behind the alert framework, you can then configure that to send you an email or an SMS or fax. Um, you know, that type of functionality. It's not something that's coming out of EM, but we just integrate with it. Okay, that's all I want to talk about over there. Um, ocean carrier booking is a scenario that is delivered over there. Um, all, of our, all of these events are, are captured in the system, so we're talking about we send out a booking request, confirm, reject the booking request from a carrier. We then send the shipping order or instruction, they confirm that shipping order, and then all the transportation e events come through from some loading, um, departure, arrival, and then unloading, all of that good stuff. All of that is coming into event management and, and allowing us that visibility in the execution tab against uh, the order. Okay. On the SNC side over here, um, you know, we have a few challenges that SNC is, uh, uh, you know, out there to help with. But a couple of the, the pieces that we need to address and we get addressed with uh, event management. How well is my supplier performing? Um, there's quite a lot of information coming out of SNC, but then uh, e EM rounds off that information just to, again, measure the plan, right? So we send a supplier a PO. Um, with a particular schedule out there, we then measure the, the, the compliance to that schedule. Okay. The integration with event management is tight. Uh, we have two visibility processes out there on the PO, procure to pay type piece, and responsive replenishment. Um, and uh, at the end of the day, what we want to do in terms of KP, KPIs, on-time delivery is one of the main ones. Object event repository is another scenario uh, that's delivered with uh, event management. So it's and it's uh, got its own components on event management. So it's a sort of a separate install on top of event management. You need a few extra components in order to enable it. But the the brains and the meat behind it is just the uh, event management. Um, and there are a couple of visibility processes that enable it for you. So if you want to track your serialized items out there, then OER is the way to go. And the product tracking and authentication scenario is the visibility piece that you need to uh, get going there. Okay. Global trade uh, services um, is another scenario that is uh, provided. So GTS is another piece that's out there to handle your global trade pieces, so your, your customs import, out export. Um, and understanding and having that visibility of how it's progressing through your uh, customs uh, operations. That integration is tied with event management, so we get some uh, warnings and notifications when we get some exception events uh, coming in from our, our customs brokers. Um, and obviously giving us those benefits, re reduced duty exposure, reduced filing costs. Uh, the sooner we can react to these things and the more that if we can do, again, the KPI analysis to see, you know, we, we perform, we're getting this exception more and more over here, how, we, how can we go about getting rid of that particular exception. So once again, it's a key role to be able to measure your plan um, against your, or your, your actual against your plan. So just, uh, just one more uh, screen here on the GTS side. Uh, they've embedded some of the functionality of event management right in the GTS screen. So there's very tight uh, integration um, around the custom documents, shipments, uh, the presentation documents, inbound custom delivery documents, and, and the declarations. So if you're into the GTS piece again, uh, you know, and you're looking at GTS presentations, if you're looking at status, then you'll be looking at EM again. All right, so let's go through some of the scenarios that we've dealt with out there. One of the common ones out there, order to cash. Uh, we've done this many times. Uh, folks just seem to need uh, visibility in the order to cash space. Uh, it's commonly known as uh, Wemo out there now. Where is my order? For this particular client over here, their challenge that they wanted to have addressed and then ultimately uh, event management was cho chosen to, to do it. They wanted to just keep their sales folks selling and out of the, uh, the back office uh, functions, um, 
when we got there, they were basically the sales guys were calling the buyers and finding out who the supplier was, finding the supplier, making sure that the supplier got it in you know, to, to the customer on time or, or move their, try to move their PO up above someone else's. They were doing all of this sort of stuff instead of uh, selling, right? So what the executives decided was to remove all access uh, to any of those back office functions, not allowed to phone the, the back office people. You will just uh, be selling and if you get a call from your customer, we're going to give you a cockpit at the end of the day that you can type in the order number or the customer and we'll show you their order and we'll show you the status of their order. That status is then updated by the back office at the end of the day too. So you leave the back office to, to make sure that the order is re removed from delivery blocks and credit blocks and the sales guy is selling. And you, but you can also provide that customer service to the customer by, by saying, you know what, your order is uh, busy being processed right now, it will ship out today. Okay. So we came in there, we do, um, there isn't a visibility process for order to cash. I think you may have noticed that up above. We had procurement and production orders and stuff like that, but we didn't have uh, order to cash. Uh, so no sales order or billing in those particular piece, but there is integration into those documents. So that's that's there, but uh, it, the process itself doesn't pull out there. Subsequently, SAP has released a rapid deployment solution that covers some of the, this particular process. So you can always jumpstart your order to cash or your WeMo implementation by implementing that RDS. We have a particular template that we fill out, um, you know, this is what it looks like over here, where we capture the needs in the, of the process and the events that we're dealing with and how those events get raised, when, what the plan should be, how they interact with, with each other, um, and that allows us to quickly ramp up on the on a order to cash um, scenario. So we, we've deployed that there uh, on this particular client. Uh, so at the end of the day, the solution was, okay, so how do we keep the, the salesman selling, right? So we're providing them a WeMo report, where is my order, which is a single simplified company interface to status orders throughout the order life cycle, right? It informs the account executive of each order status chain. So if there's something that the back office does that, it, that um, requires the, the rep or the account executive to take action, then we we, we change the status and we actually deliver a notification to them to say you need to go ahead and, and maybe reset the expectation with the customer because we're going to miss our deadline. Um, at the end of the day, the information was passed off to BW and we monitored the service level of the team and of the back office. Right? So this gave a little bit more of a comfort to the, the sales reps to understand that the, the back office is you know, performing according to their service level agreement, so you know, there's no reason to really phone and chase up with them because they're doing their job. Our enables was SAP event, enablers, SAP event management and the business information warehouse. Uh, we set up different stages in the process and this is what we ultimately uh, followed and tracked as a status. We go through a creation stage, uh, so quote to create, um, we go through an internal review, which is uh, everything that's, uh, uh, you know, that uh, requires the order to go through before it is allowed to be fulfilled. Uh, being processed, for example, is everything that's happening in the warehouse. Then we get shipment confirmed, which is, uh, okay, now we've issued the shipment. Invoiced, obviously, you know, if you go through a billing block, but uh, ultimately if it's invoiced, then it's invoiced. Proof of delivery, and then the last one, let's send uh, the order to BW. So the architecture for this particular piece, um, they had WeMo and event management ha happening on an SEM server, the one in the middle. Uh, we had ECC integrated with uh, EM from a sales order, purchase requisition, PO, um, acknowledgement, so the whole P purchase to pay scenario also in there, and then the delivery process transfer order and the invoice integrating into SCM so they got the full visibility from ECC. At that stage the client also had a 46C environment which was still running their warehouse. So we did sort of a third party you know, uh, scenario, you know, sending the, the purchase order out to 46C which would be a sales order. They would then either create the product or, or ship the product out of that one too. Well, we got those events in from event manage, into event management, so we could have full visibility into that process too. 
then ultimately uh, we extract that information into BW for um, uh, an analytics perspective. On the front end, uh, they decided not to use the SAP standard uh, event management uh, web user interface. Back then it was a little bit of a, a bad interface. There's a new one now with EM, which is pretty good. So they wrote one uh, in Adobe Flex, and we'll go through that now. So let me just quickly run through a, a quick demo over here. And we, we will run out of time if I don't go through it quickly, so my, my apologies. So this, if you look at the top one, auto create, we're going to check the credit block, the user status, and incompletion. Um, if you look at, the, that's actually in Adobe Flex part of the screen over here, and there's my stages on the right-hand side, IR is internal review, BP being processed, shipment confirmed, invoice POD, and you can see the, and then on the left-hand side, overall, that's really the only thing that the, the customer service rep needs to have a look at. If it's green, you know, carry on, you know, and you can search, obviously, just show me all the ones that aren't green. Um, but there's some details right there. When it was created, who's the client, and so forth. What's the value, um, and, and and what status it's in. So if I look at it, in, it's busy being internally reviewed. So you know, we don't really know what the issue is. It could be incomplete. It could have a credit block, whatever it is. Uh, but it's still within the service level, so it's green. Then we complete the order, which would be the the next row down. So internal review, you know, the little the little. Uh, icon that it turns to, to complete, uh, but overall it's still green, so we're still within the service level, we're still going to ship it on time. Then we create the delivery which shows me a little clock on, on my being process, which means that I'm busy doing this one right now, it hasn't finished yet, but it's busy going. Then the next one, I've got uh, delivery PGI, you see my overall status on the left hand side there is moved into a little truck, and if I click on that it will take me to the, the, the tracking IDs, my being processed piece is, um, uh, is complete. If I then do uh, shipment, uh, shipment confirm, which is the ne next one, my billing block has been removed, so now I've been PGI'd and, and my billing block is removed. In other words, I can now bill this particular product, so I'm good to go. Then we have invoice created, proof of delivery, so you can sort of see how the right-hand side fills up as the process uh, goes along here and they're giving me my visibility all the time. Um, to not only the rep who's interested in this particular order, but anybody who's actually looking at, hey, show me all my ones where my being processed is on, you know, currently going, what's the total value of those orders, They're easy enough to do. So this is ultimately what it looks like from a, a, an Adobe Flex, you have your search screen at the top, you get your results, depending on the one that you select over there, you get your detail on the bottom, uh, bottom of the screen, and your normal EM web UI looks some, something similar to that. So just by allowing me to browse for this particular customer, I can just see there's only one order here, or well, there's actually two orders because I know what the icons mean, that need some addressing. Obviously the, the red one is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm missing my service level over here, and overall I've missed it completely, so I probably need to make a call uh, at some stage to see what's going on there. Then the very bottom one, the 9060 order over there, that is the icon fully scheduled, which means I've rescheduled past the date that I promised the customer I need to make a call to the customer and, uh, and say that it's not going to be there on time. So that makes a, gives it an action to me to do. And as soon as I take action on that one, then it'll go back to green because now it's addressed. Now you have your next service level that you could you know, potentially miss again. On the analytics side, this is what they were doing. So if you look on the stage, you've got internal review, being processed, invoiced. Um, and then uh, the, the pie charts over there just give me a running total, so they push the information out there on an hourly basis to, to BW, so they could have a look at the number of orders that are out there that are within uh, SLA, so the green ones, that are within 10% of the SLA, which are the yellow ones, and that are past the SLA, which are the red ones. All right. So moving it along a little bit, let's look at the procure to pay scenario. We've done a few of those out there. Uh, the challenge again, let's track uh, our purchase orders, we want to check the, uh, the acknowledgements and the goods receipts, invoice receipts that have been changed uh, by the su supplier, and we we'll want to be able to react to those, right? So again, you know, you could use workflow to kick off, uh, you know, the act, the, the act of correcting these pieces and, and making sure that those changes happen, but the tracking and the monitoring of these, again, we, done, we did in event management. 
Okay. We also extended this uh, the standard uh, procure to pay scenario to include EDI visibility, and I'll show you how we did that. So here's the standard process: PO created, PO acknowledged, PO goods received, PO invoice received. We wanted to make sure that all of those documents uh, from PO acknowledgement onwards, uh, we wanted to measure the changes coming back. You know, did you change the price? Did you change the quantity? Did you change the date on us? And if we if they did, then we were going to react and send those to the buyers and so forth. But also on the right hand side, let's check our own EDI system. Did we transmit the PO to the EDI system okay? Was it mapped okay? And did the vendor ultimately acknowledge receipt of that? There was some questions around uh, how well our EDI process was performing then. So this was one that gave us that uh, visibility. Um, here's the standard UI. This is the previous version. So this is the 5.0 version. The new Web and Pro, uh, you know, working on floor plan manager. It looks better than this, but this is the one that's still, still usable. Um, over here again, you can see the red, yellow, green type uh, traffic light scenario. There's no yellows over here, but Oh, there is a yellow over there. So if there's a quantity change, that's a yellow. Um, if a delivery date changed, that was outside of uh, it. Um, that was a, you know, that's an acknowledgement with the date discrepancy. That's a red one. Um, so you can see almost all the orders. And this is uh, some some of this information was live information. Uh, when they went live, um, almost every single PO had a discrepancy, and they had to turn off the alerting. Uh, because we were basically spamming the buyers with all of these issues. And they really thought that their suppliers were conforming to the PO that was sent out to them, but it was completely uh, not true. Um, as I mentioned, we sent an alert to the buyer, which top screen over there, that's our alert framework integration. Um, we then email enabled the uh, uh, overview monitor report. So when certain things should happen, like goods receipt should happen on a certain day, invoice receipt should happen on a certain day, um, if those things didn't happen, you know, in a certain time, then uh, we would um, it, it would go overdue, and then we would actually send them an alert. We email enabled that because too many of them were going overdue. So on a daily basis, a buyer would get a list of all their POs and the issues around those particular POs that uh, went overdue from yesterday. So they would look at yesterday's uh, events uh, today make sure that uh, those were addressed. So it's a little bit weird. But it certainly was uh, interesting to see that they weren't being, you know, the, the, the vendors were basically doing whatever they wanted. And until we implemented event management, the company did not know that that was what was happening. This is a large uh, a movie um, um, producer, uh, just for reference sake. So from a, a monitoring and a, a KPI perspective, um, the, producer, uh, the process cycle count, so how many POs are going through this particular one. So percentage of deviations versus that total count was measured. So how many acknowledgments out of the total number of uh, POs that were received came in with changes. How many goods receipts were not matching the PO. What's the percentage of IR not matching the PO. What's the average cycle duration. These are all pretty standard uh, to, to extract out of an EM one. Uh, what's the percentage of on time versus early versus late? Um, you know, is also a very good one. So based on each event, you know, goods receipt, invoice receipt, what's my percentage uh, around that? Okay, so here's a here's a unique one uh, where we took a bit of a visibility process and then combined it with our own functionality um, and that of a third party uh, ReadSoft. Uh, which does uh, accounts payable, you know, releasing of invoices, supply invoices into the system for payment. Um, the issue at this particular client was um, they needed the ability to uh, pay their suppliers on time for large capital POs that were coming across the water and often would take, you know, three months to get across. Uh, but when it leaves the dock on the other side or, or, or even onto a, a carrier to get to the dock on the other side, that supplier, uh, you know, ships the invoice. Okay, because it's basically left their um, their ownership, and they want to get paid. But uh, the product only gets through to us three months later, so the terms could be thirty days, and uh, so so we miss that terms because we only pay on goods receipt. Um, they were losing out on millions and millions and millions of dollars, so that was the the issue. So they want to be able to pay within the term, but limit their liabilities. In other words. 
let's not pay for anything that uh, we actually don't, you know, that they, that they say they should, but they haven't really, okay? So what was the solution over there? Uh, we pay for logistics invoices based on the match between the invoice uh, that needs to match the PO. We need to pay, um, that needs to be matched against the advance ship notice uh, received from the supplier. So the supplier needs to tell us what they've shipped. And then we match that against the carrier notification receipt of the, of the goods from the, uh, from the supplier. So in other words, in that ASN that the supplier sends us, they'll send us a track carrier tracking number 123. Then we'll pick up the notification from the carrier for 123 any notification from them so that we know that they've physically got it, that will allow us to actually release the, the goods for payment. So our enablers were event management, the supplier, because they have to give us that EDI enabled ASN, and then the carrier, which is an EDI enabled status notification. The benefits to the company is a greater than 50% improvement on prompt payment. It was more than that, and it was, uh, at the end of the day, a total in excess of $20 million per year saving. Like I said, they uh, capital POs. So just an overview, purchase order, we order the product, we set the terms, set the distance. The supplier ships the, the products, they transfer the goods to the carrier who then sends us an ASN. The carrier picks it up, so they're taking possession of the product and they send us the tracking status. On the invoice, the supplier sends us the invoice, it matches the PO, matches the ASN with the carrier status, and then we can release the invoice. Seems pretty simple. Okay, here's pictorially what's happened. So customer, we place the purchase order, we send it over to the supplier, they uh, manufacture the product, they pack it, they, they ship it over to us, they send us the ASN, uh, then they send us an invoice, so their accounts receivable sends us an invoice, that's the third one. Then the carrier system, they send us a tracking one, uh, the parcel status. If those three of them match up, we can release it and accounts payable takes over. Pretty simple. Um, production order piece, this is a fun one I guess. Uh, it took us all of the three days on site, but one day to actually configure the scenario. Their challenge was, where is my plane? Wimp. <laughs> Which is, uh, it may sound silly, but uh, they had the production order that had one bomb equals one plane. So there was a very serious bomb at the end of the day. So it was a startup uh, plane manufacturer. And all the, all the operations uh, director said to me is, I just want to know, I've got these six warehouses in front of me. I want to know which plane is in which warehouse at any one, one stage, because he has different folks in involved and responsible for each one. So if, he's, if the plane is in painting uh, or design, then he needs to understand, okay, this is, this, is, uh, this is the folks that I need to talk about over here. So at the end of the day, we implemented the standard production order malfunction visibility process. Uh, and it just, as I said, it took a day to enable and demonstrate the capability. So it integrated in the standard production order process, the event management visibility piece. So CO01, you can actually see uh, release manufacturing order and so forth. Those are expected events uh, for the event handler overview. So when you release the production order, the status comes over here to say this is what's, uh, oh, this particular production order has been released. Then other ones, start manufacturing order, finish manufacturing order and deliver. Those are little yellow icons there. Those means that this is an expected event that needs to occur but it hasn't occurred yet. Um, if we look on the right hand there, if we confirm that production order, you'll see it's gone from release to start to finish. Um, it, it captures those dates. And then in our web UI, there it shows us the full visibility in, into that. So as long as you put your production order in there for that relates to that particular plane, it'll actually show you the, the location of that plane um, at which workstation it is right now, at which plant. Um, just with the, that, we can also measure breakdowns of a particular workstation. Uh, so for example, this one over here showing me an exception event, a little lightning event, occurred you know, on that particular date. Um, you can see this directly within uh, event management, uh, within ECC, sorry. So this is CO03. So we're looking at a production order and there's the event management tab over there. Um, and in there it's pulling out the information that you need right from event management. All right, excellent, we managed to get through that. So if, again, uh, I'll just remind you here, if you have any questions, let us know and we'll uh, do our best to answer them. 
So just to, to wrap up over here, let's talk a little bit about what's the effort behind those. So on that procure to pay scenario, we had one part-time EM architect, one full-time SAP architect. Um, that SAP architect didn't uh, understand event management, but um, you know I was the part-time one uh, working with them, making sure that they had that there. Uh, and then we had one part-time um, functional expert and two uh, full-time SAP functional experts. So it's not necessary that you have always the full-time EM person, but you do need you know some good shop folks then on, on, on hand that can then react to you know what it is we're trying to do, um, which we did at this particular client. Typically, you'd have that person there full-time configuring it and everything like that. They had the time to to take to do a bit of a knowledge transfer as well as um, uh, you know l learning it on the job. Then on the development side, the developers or the configurers weren't allowed to develop, so we had to have uh, an EM developer help uh, the ABAP developer over there. So again, you know, this was pretty much a part-time EM uh, supported effort, but definitely a full-time scenario where you know the, the consultants on site didn't have EM knowledge, but we had to do our part in actually con you know transferring that knowledge over to them. On the order to cash scenario, uh, during the design and configure, it's full-time EM architect. Um, I'm on the develop side a full-time EM developer and an ABAP developer as well. A separate full-time BI developer um, because they wanted to do those fancy pie charts and stuff like that, so uh, that's what that person did. And then they also did the, the custom uh, web UI, so again, they had a full-time UI developer just developing that piece. And our EM architect was basically just helping them with the uh, Okay, this is the this is what your function call needs to look at, and this is what it means ultimately. So basically, describing the BAPI call. Um, on the production order side, uh, it was just one person there full time, just to get that one up and running. Okay, not a big deal. So no development; they're all just standard configuration. All right. In conclusion, what values derive from from EM? We've got exception management or the ability to allow us to manage our processes by exception, together with status management, so in other words, tell me the status of my uh, business process, performance monitoring, so how well are we performing, uh, whether it's operationally or analytically, so real time now, or how well have we performed, and then uh, ultimately giving visibility to all three of these to the folks that need to know, right? So. If there's exceptions, let the right people know. If the statuses are changing or people are interested in any of the status, let's give visibility to them. And then if, uh, in terms of how well we're performing, let's give that visibility to folks. All of this combined gives us that process improvement and real value. So it's just taking you know, what we currently have out there and adding that business value to it. Um, I do want to show you this screen over here, which is our SAP event management uh, maturity quadrant. There's those two distinct um, separate pieces of event management. We've got the visibility piece, and then we've got exception management piece, right? You can't perform exception management if there's uh, issues in your business process that uh, relate to the maturity. And what I mean by that is if you're, ha if you're having data integrity issues, so in other words, the master data is not maintained in your systems. So we've got inaccurate data. You've got old data in your system. So uh, you can't trust the data that's in the system, and then naturally, how can you uh, do run exception management? Because your plan will be off. How do you establish a plan when the master data for your lead time on the material is sits at seven seven days for each and every material in your on your master data? Can't do it. Um, what you need to do is go through cleaning up that data before you can then move on to the second quadrant over here, which is the rules. So. If your data is all good and, and accurate now, but your rules are sitting in spreadsheets, uh, well, that doesn't help either. You know, so if your rule says, you know, for this particular material type on this on this day at this warehouse, this is the lead time for picking. Well, how can you put a picking deadline in on on it if that rule is sitting somewhere else out in a, in a spreadsheet? So what we need to do is get those rules in the system. For example, in the procurement space, let's get MRP running. Let's get the exception monitor running over there, let's make sure that that's all working in the system. And once that's working in the system, then we mature in our rules piece, 
that's when we can implement the exception management using event management. If you're still sitting in quadrants one or two in your organization or your process, it doesn't mean you can't put in event management. I would just put it in for visibility and it allows you to understand exactly how it is you're, you're performing. So for example, at Large Movie Studio, that's where they were. You know, so they gained visibility into um, you know, how often these, these exceptions are happening and then they can start to address that, whether that was addressing it with the supplier or whether it was addressing it internally with their own process. They understood now that they were having you know, these issues out there and the visibility was given to the right folks. Um, with the order to cash scenario too, that large high tech company, they had this, a very similar issue. That visibility that they were given for their back office, they noticed that about 50, just over 50% of all their orders were being stopped by credit hold. Okay. And their goal was to get 80% of their orders automated, and, but yet 50% of them were stopped for credit. So when they dived into seeing what the issues were, there were about 15 customers and that were their main customers ordering many, many products or many, many, many times that had old uh, credit data. So they re-ran uh, a credit, credit run on those particular customers, uh, updated the master data in the system and about uh, immediately it was about a 25-30% improvement just by you know, a one day worth of effort in getting those ones through, but they would never have known that had they not had that visibility in, okay, this is the particular area we need to, to deal with. All right, so in terms of next steps, you know, if you're interested in event management um, at all, you know, and there's, there's obviously going to be more questions around how does this fit into my organization, you know, what's the level of effort over here, so we go through what we call a scoping assessment where we look at your high level processes, we do an organization analysis, a gap analysis, uh, risk or ROI assessment, uh, ultimately providing a roadmap towards uh, achieving that value. So we may be at one now that will give you the roadmaps on, on what's needed to go from two through seven. Um, but then we give you an indication of what type of resources, timing and effort would, would go into that particular space. Uh, space. So that scoping assessment would be the next one if you're interested in, in pursuing this at all. If you're looking for more information on event management, uh, as I said on our website, we have event management out there. Uh, we also have a book on it, so you can go to geniepress.com slash qdata for, the, I guess, I think it's the best price out there. Uh, you can get the book from there. Other than that, it's been good. I've got a few more minutes if there's any questions, now would be a good time to plonk them in over there. I haven't seen anything come through yet, but in the meantime you can just have a look at a few of the clients that we've helped out over there throughout the world um, on event management. Uh, QData we definitely have as part of our supply chain extended solutions practice. Um, our focus is on um, event management, transportation management, uh, supply chain management and so forth. So this is what we do. I don't see any questions coming through so I'm going to call a little bit of an early end to this. If you do uh, want to see this again, like I said, it will be out on the website anyway. But thank you for attending. We do appreciate it.